When it comes to construction, the first thing that comes to mind for a lot of people is walls. Go look up a video series on building a house or a shed, and one of the most viewed videos in that series is most likely going to be the wall framing video. Framing is the poster child of construction, even though I consider the foundation and floor framing to be just as, if not more important. So after everything that we've done so far, at long last, it is time to start framing. And as always, I'm gonna make it simple, and easy. First, I'm gonna lay out my bottom plates, and one of the things you always wanna make sure you do is something you may take for granted. I mean, you did buy two by four by eight foot sticks of lumber, right? These things are not always exactly 96 inches. If they're not 96 inches, then I have to make them 96 inches. My top plates and my bottom plates, I'm gonna sandwich those together. Now, I can mark for 16 inch on center. My tape measure has a red number every 16 inches, so at every red number, I come back half the thickness of a two by four, which is three quarters of an inch and set ahead. I'm also gonna make a mark indicating which side the stud is supposed to sit at when I'm nailing everything off. Now I'm gonna transfer my marks across both of those boards. Now I have this mark here, which indicates that the stud is gonna go on this side. Alternatively, some people will do an X. I usually just do that. If you want eight foot walls, you can buy two by fours that are 92 and 5 eighths inches instead of 96. That's because you can then account for the bottom plate and a double top plate, which brings you back to your eight foot wall. If you use a two by four that is 96 inches in length, then your walls will be four and a half inches taller than eight feet. Why does that matter? Well, that comes into play when you're sheathing the walls. Using 96 inch studs leaves you cutting small strips of sheathing and drywall if you're going to do that to cover up that four and a half inches. So basically it just means you're going to have to put a little bit more money, thought, and effort into future steps if you're using full length two by fours. So we got the line. We got the line indicating that this is the side that the stud goes on. Just as a side note, Try to keep in mind, this is not an exercise in efficiency. You know those YouTubers that have channels and put out videos, but they're actually contractors? Okay, this is not that. I am not them. I like to enjoy the process of building and creating. I like to stop and look at what I'm doing. Maybe give my son a lesson on something that has come to mind. I'm not working for a company building a client's whatever. Time is not money to me. So how fast I nail off a wall is of no concern to me. And I would hope that if you take on a project like this, that you would enjoy the building process as well. Sometimes things in life are not all about efficiency. This is a 20 foot wall. I'm not even gonna try and lift this all at once. I'm not gonna sheathe this and lift this all at once. I don't have a crew of five men to help me out here. So that being as it is, I'm gonna lift this in eight foot sections with a four foot section at the end. Safety over all else. An eight foot section can be lifted by one person without much of an issue, but if you have the help, by all means use it. Those stop blocks I placed help to flush the wall up with the floor framing as well. Dual purpose. I'm gonna plumb this wall using a level and my son is going to drive a screw into the end joist for bracing when I've got that where I want it. Hold on. All right, right there. Okay. The nail pattern for a bottom wall plate is you're supposed to go into a floor joist, a rim joist, or a blocking every 16 inches. Check your local codes. They could be different. When I'm raising this second section, I have it off to the side a little. 
and I'm going to knock it into place. That's because I have to make sure that the top and bottom plates for the splice seat how they are supposed to seat. All right, go. And don't forget to nail off the splice in the wall. This last section, it's only four feet. I'm just gonna lift it into place on my own. I didn't move the stop blocks for this section, so my framing square gets me exactly where I need to be. Hand me my nailer, would you? All right. I like to frame adjacent walls. I've seen some and worked with some that just work their way around a building. For the most part, small buildings like this are pretty much a personal choice. Now this wall, I've got a frame for two windows and a 36 inch door. So what I like to do is mark my layout like it's a blank 16 inch on center wall. Then I go back and measure out for my windows and doors. The rough openings you need to lay out for will be listed on the specific windows and doors that you have and that you plan on installing. A general rule of thumb is add two inches for the width and two and a half inches for the height. So a 36 inch wide door will need a 38 inch rough opening unless otherwise indicated by the manufacturer. So a typical door or window frame will look something like this. Your top and bottom plates, king stud, which will go all the way from the top plate to the bottom plate. Jack stud, or otherwise known as a trimmer stud, will be nailed to the inside of the king studs. The header, which is a whole discussion in and of itself. In my case, I'm using a double two by six with a filler piece between to match my wall thickness. That can span up to four and a half feet for a building up to 20 feet wide. Notice I put stipulations in there for the size of the header because that calculation changes based on several factors that would be unique to each specific project. Cripple studs follow the 16 inch on center spacing above the rough opening and that's why you lay out for the 16 inch on center studs first and then come back and measure for your windows and doors. For a window it's pretty much the same thing except now we're going to add a rough sill and then the cripple studs follow the same 16 inch on center spacing. Additionally you may need extra cripple studs nailed to the inside of the jacks and run from the bottom of the rough sill to the bottom plate. In my experience I've never seen these specifically called out for in smaller accessory buildings like sheds. Now this wall because of the window and door framing is going up in 12 foot section and an 8 foot section. Right there. Hold me close till I get up. Time is barely on our side. I don't want to waste what's left. The storms we chase are leading us. And love is all we'll ever trust. Yeah. No, I don't want to waste what's left. And love. So here is the final wall. I want a double door on the front here. And so this is my bottom plate and that is my top plate. And so what I've done 
is I hooked a tape measure on the outside of this framed wall here and from there I measured 16 inches on center all the way down and my door my double door I want directly in the center of my building I don't want to move it to the right I don't want to move it to the left so I'm not going to do what I did with the door over there so here I found the exact center of my building which was already there for when I did the trusses so I transferred that mark up to my bottom plate and then over from the bottom plate to the top plate I want a 60 inch rough opening so that is 30 inches this way and 30 inches that way so I burned an inch so I set my tape measure at 31 came over to 1 which is 30 inches and set ahead now because this is 60 inches I have to have two jacks so there's my first jack there's my second jack and then a king some would argue that you should set a second king but this is a storage shed slash workshop so I'm just gonna do one king and then the, I did the exact same thing I just flipped that tape measure over set it to 31 came over to one set ahead first jack second jack king stud and then every 16 inch on center stud that I have in between here gets removed for the bottom plate and these on the top plate get circled indicating that these are cripples no, I don't Up next, we'll be installing the trusses. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to check me out at simplyeasydiy.com. Subscribe if you haven't, and like if you like. <laughs>